Hey everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm doing my October wrap up video to talk to you guys about what books I read in October. I actually have quite a few books I've read in October, so there's a lot to get through. I'm going to try to talk as quickly as I can. I have my reading list up here. So if you see me looking over, I have my reading list and I also have the books brought up on like Amazon so I can be reminded of names and all that stuff to help me explain the books to you guys a little bit better. But before I get into all of the books, I'm going to go ahead and talk through one particular book because this is a book that will be on my next several logs for like the next year and a half. And so I'm just going to get it out of the way. But I am reading Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. It is a textbook. Literally, it is a basically a first year like seminary textbook that I'm doing as a Bible study with some friends from church. We're going to be in this book for like the next year and a half ish total. I've already been doing it for six months and it's a lot. It's a literal textbook. So like it's a literal textbook and there's a lot in it. It's very good. But just keep that in mind that as I talk about reading books, that book will be on the list. It's just going to take me a really long time to get through. All right, let's jump on in. I'm going to go in the order that I read these so that I don't lose my spot and start talking about something totally different that nobody cares about. All right, first book I read was called Prince of Wolves by Susan Crenard. And I loved this book. It is book one of the Val Cash series. And uh, definitely for me, like a five out of five book, I was definitely intrigued in this series. So the story is about a woman named Joelle Randall who... Her parents were killed in a plane crash when she was younger and she is trying to find the site where her parents crashed. They crashed in the Canadian Rockies and it was during winter when no one could get to the plane to really find them, but they all know they crashed and they're, you know, they know what happened to them, but they weren't able to get to the actual wreckage and retrieve the plane and all that stuff for her. So here she is several years later, she's now an adult and she's trying to find where her parents crashed. And so she hires a guide to help her get through because obviously having to trek through the mountains in the Canadian Rockies, not easy. So she hires this man named Luke Gavaudin. I think I think it's Gavaudin. I might be butchering that because it's a French name, but she hires him and he's known as like a loner and he's a weirdo and an outcast and nobody really likes him. And throughout the course of the story, you find out that he is a ancient race of werewolves and there's a secret community that lives out in the Canadian Rockies and they all speak French and it's it's really like an intriguing book. I it has it doesn't have great reviews on Goodreads when I don't know why. I didn't I haven't looked at the Amazon, but I loved it and I actually want to read the rest of the series. I mean just to read the rest of it. So highly recommend it. It's a very 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 good book. All right, second book I read was Grigory by did it do who's her name? Grigory by Lauren Smith. This book was okay. It is about another um, paranormal, because I love my paranormal. He's a dragon shifter. His name is Grigory, obviously, because that's his, that's the name of the book. But he's an ancient dragon shifter and guardian of the family's fortune and lands and history and all that stuff. Basically, like 150-ish years ago or 100 years ago, something like that, they're befriended by a human who writes a book about them, and they have been trying to keep this book out of human hands ever since and this woman comes along and she's trying to prove dragons are real i don't know why but it's explained in the book and uh she ends up finding this book and so he has to stop her from spreading that they're true and that they exist and all this stuff and they end up falling in love because it's a romance it was okay it was a fun weekend read do i want to read the rest of the series honestly no there, it's part of the Brothers of Ash and Fire series. I don't really care to finish it. I hate to say that because it sounds mean because I've read a lot of Lauren Smith stuff before that I liked, but this one just didn't like excite me all that much. I'd probably give it a three out of five maybe because it was good, but not like so good that I just had to keep reading it. So that's my thought process on it. And then you know how you read a book about a certain topic and then Amazon starts recommending every other book that's ever been written about a similar topic. Well, that's what they did. And they ended up recommending the, uh, what's it called? The Prince of the Other Worlds series by Kara Lockhart and Cassie Alexander. So I'm going to give this series a four out of five 
I did read all four books in the series and the books are Dragon Called, Dragon Destined, Dragon Faded, Dragon Mated. Yes. And they're very short books. I got through all four of them in like one weekend because they're like 200 words per book. They're on um, Kindle, obviously. And I thought it was really interesting because you can very much tell there's two authors and you can, it's very clear that one did the woman and one did the man because it would switch off by chapter. So you'd have one chapter from her point of view, you have a chapter from his point of view, and I'm pretty sure, although I have no verification of this, I'm pretty sure one of them wrote the woman's chapters and one of them wrote the man's chapters because it was very clear that it was a different author writing that chapter, but it was well done. I kept reading all four books in the series because there's a lot of plot twists that like you just need to know. You get into it and you're like, wait, what? I need to know what happens next. And so you keep reading. But the reason it's a four is because I did feel like Andy in the book was a little bit immature. Is the word immature the right word I'm looking for? I'm not quite sure how to explain it. She seemed a little bit like she seemed a little dumb. I'm just, <laughs> she was a little bit dumb, a little naive, and I didn't, and some of her reactions were very much like, is she an adult or is she in college right now? It was just, I didn't care for her character. And the other thing I didn't care for was that it is a pretty raunchy book. There was a lot of skipping in this book because there was, a, there was some very over the top scenes that I didn't care for because that's not my jam. But I did love the actual story itself. So I would recommend reading it, but just keep those couple things in mind as you do. All right. Then after I got done reading my my five dragon books, I ended up choosing to go with um, something that was actually in a book book form. I'm going like in the order that I read here, kind of, not really. So I ended up reading The Woods by Harlan Coben. I picked this up at, sorry for the snivel, I picked this up at Sam's Club several months ago and just now got to finishing it. And it's really, really good book. It's definitely not a romance. It's more of a, like a murder mystery slash thriller type thing. And the main character in the book, his name is Paul Copeland. And when he was a teenager, his sister goes missing. She goes into the woods with her boyfriend and she never comes out and no one knows what happened to her. And all I will tell you is that what you think happened to her is not what happened. So what gets the whole story going is that 20 years later, there's a dead body found. He works as like a prosecutor or I don't know, like some kind of, he's a county prosecutor. And this dead body that is found is actually the boyfriend that his sister went missing with. And they've thought for 20 years that these two people are dead and that nobody found the bodies. And all of a sudden this guy's 20 years older and it's, his body's found. And he's like, wait, what? Um, we, you're supposed to be dead already. How are you dead again? So that's it. All I'm going to say is that it, you are on twists and turns all the way through the end of this book. You have no clue what happened until the last page. And it's really good, like really good. And apparently this is being turned into like a Netflix series. So I'm kind of excited to check that out, but not a romance, but really, really good. And I definitely recommend that you check it out because it was a very good book. All right. After I got done reading that one, I ended up reading doo -doo -doo, um, something a little bit lighter because that one was kind of like heavy and I had to lighten things up a tad because you needed to after reading that one. So I read a couple like fun historical romance type things. The first one is called Kirsten Cherist, The Duke's Willful Wife by Brie Wolf. And it's book two of the Love Second Chance series. I've not read book one and I was able to read this book and follow along just fine. So apparently if you didn't read book one, that's a-okay. You can still follow this book. And the way it works is you've got, this is a trope that how many times have we read this trope in historical romance? And I still pick the books up because I like them. It is a Duke who has gone broke and he needs money to pay off all of his debts because he's inherited debts from his father or whatever. And he goes and he finds this man who's like came into money and he's got this big dowry he's giving to his girls. And the one girl is already in love with somebody. And then the daughter who's like the 
spinster that nobody wants because she's weird daughter ends up tricking him into marrying her and it kind of the story goes from there there's some stories about like how he actually lost his money and the history of this girl he's married's parentage and like there's some there's normal twists and turns was it like the most exciting book i've ever read no but i really it was a good fun light read and it was a good like i just need something to have fun with and to get my mind off things kind of book so i would probably give it a four out of five it was a good book i would i would definitely read it again do i want to read all seven books in the series probably not but if i came across another book on the series i'd probably read it because it was a fun read so all right next one was my other light read was the misadventures of miss adelaide this is a sweet regency romance school of charm book one by maggie dallin this is a clean romance there is no bumping and grinding in this book so it's a win-win for that one so miss adelaide is which does not her real name is actually like undercover as like a housemaid type thing and she's exhausted and she passes out and everyone thinks that she's there with like her child and that she's like a runaway i got pregnant i got knocked up and i'm hiding because it's like back in the day and i don't want to get in trouble blah 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 and he it's so it's about him falling in love with her and she's undercover as like a, i think a maid or something and at the end obviously they fall in love and everything works out and you find out why she's running again is this the kind of book that like i was super shocked by the outcome no when you pick up a book like this you know how it's going to end she's going to have some twisted secret that comes out but it's still a really fun read so this one i would probably also give like maybe a three maybe four out of five maybe more like a th maybe this one's more like a three for me because it's pretty like you knew what was going to happen it's pretty much like you could have wrote the book yourself because you knew exactly where she was going to go with the storyline but it was still really fun and i enjoyed it a lot so if you want just a fun easy read this is a fun one all righty so next book that i read is and this one i am like super obsessed with and i have to read the entire seven book series i don't know if she's gonna have more than seven books this is book one of the immortal curse series by lexi c foss and it's called blood laws now i'm not gonna lie when i first picked up the book i was like there's glossary terms and i kind of had a little moment i'm like don't know if i'm mentally prepared for a glossary of terms but it reminded me a little bit of like christine feehan's dark series has a glossary J.R. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhood series has a glossary of terms. It's kind of a similar start to that. So it took me a minute to understand the terms of like, who are the Hydraeans and who are, you know, the Seraphims and who are like all these. But once you kind of figured it out, uh, it was really easy to get into. And I loved this book. It's very reminiscent of... I don't know who it's reminiscent of but it it was intriguing and i definitely have to read all seven series because i want to know who the heck astasia is i think it's astasia astasia i don't know how to pronounce her name but his name is isaac and basically it starts out in this first book with she has the ability to say things and make people do them so she's like leave me alone you'll have the urge like oh i need to leave her alone because she can like persuade you or like i think that's what i'm looking for and she uses it on this vampire and he's like wait how does she have the ability to do that that stuff doesn't work on vampires and that's what piques his attention and then it goes on from there and you're entered into this world where they're trying to figure out like she's a hydraean how is she hydraean how how does she she was raised by humans and then there's all these twists and turns and plot twists and plot holes and again it is there's cliffhangers like you are left at the end of this book with a cliffhanger and i really really need to get the next book so i'm trying to pace myself and maybe do like one of these books a month so i'm not just reading like what mary read in october all seven books of the immortal curse series you know what i mean trying to like spread it out but once you get past like the glossary of terms and the first couple of chapters this book like hits with a bang and it keeps going it's such a good book like i really really like it definitely five out of five for me and i'm really looking forward to reading the rest of the series so yay 
All right, that's all of my ebook books. So now I'm gonna move my list over to the screen. So if you guys see me looking, obviously you probably figure out I'm looking at my list of books. So the rest of the books I read are book books. So I'm going to kind of talk through those with you. Um, there's a couple Bible study books, which I'll leave for the end. But this one is my book of the month book. So my sister talked me into doing book of the month. I have two copies of the same book because somehow they messed things up and I ended up with two. And so if anybody needs a book to read, leave me a comment. If you've made it, you know, 15, 16 minutes into my video and you're like, hey, I'm still here and I really wanna read your book, I've got two copies and I am more than happy to share a copy with you. So leave me a comment and then I will get your email from you and I will send you a copy of this book in the mail because I don't need two. Don't need two, don't need them. All right, so this one is called The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlisle. And it's a thriller. This is not a book that I would have picked up if it wasn't for Book of the Month Club. Uh, I have my next book coming and I'm like super freaking excited about the next book in, in November. So this one is creepy as all get out. I t identical twins. One wants what the other has. How far will she go to get it? So I'm gonna say this, number one, they are both crazy. Like, I love my sister, she's my best friend. I can't believe they went to the ends that they went through in this book. Uh, they, they both, they both some crazy girls. Let's just put the, there's a little bit of going on there. But very good book, very, um, put it this way, it doesn't end how you think it's gonna end. So I will tell you that Basically, she's trying to take over the life of her sister. So I'm going to read the front cover and then I'm going to tell you why I reacted the way I did. So here's how it says. Twin sisters Iris and Summer are startlingly alike, but beyond what the eye sees lies a darkness that sets them apart. Cynical and insecure, Iris has been envious of Summer's never-ending good fortune, including her perfect husband. Called to Thailand to help her sister sail the family yacht to Seychelles, Seychelles? Iris nurtures her own hopes for what might happen on the journey, but she finds herself alone in the middle of the Indian Ocean, everything changes. Her sister gets like swept out to sea and she ends up taking over her life and living her life and like becoming her summer and like being with her husband and like all this stuff. But I will tell you this, it does not end like you think it will end. You read the last paragraph of this book and my mouth went, What? What just happened? What just happened? What just happened? And I had to sit for like a minute like, OMG, what just happened? Total twist ending, like very well done. Not the kind of book I usually read. I love happy romances. I felt a little disturbed when I <laughs> finished reading this book, but it's so well done. So if anybody wants to read this, I've got two copies. You are welcome to one. Just leave me a comment. Whoever comments first, it's yours. And then my two Bible study books of the month. This one I started reading a few months ago and I finished this month. It's K. Arthur as Silver Refined. Um, did it as part of like a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program with a woman in my church. And it says, what can you do when life doesn't turn out like planned? It's about dealing with why does God let bad things happen to good people, right? And it says, but what if God just didn't let it happen? What if the things you call disappointments are actually his appointments he's using you he's using it to make you more like christ what are the circum what if your circum i can't read what if your circumstances are actually the flames of his grace intended to melt and burn away the undesirable elements in your life leaving you pure and radiant like refined silver and i loved this book it's definitely i'm gonna keep it but i recommend it and i think that if anybody just really needs like encouragement or going through hard times this is a good one and then I mentioned this on my Instagram, I think, but I read the first in my Gospel for Life series that I picked up, The Gospel and Adoption. Some of you may know that I started the process of adopting through foster care. And this is, is these books are great because they're really short and small, but they're succinct. They'll take a topic like marriage, work, raising children. I have one that's on racial um, equality. 
and it's like what does the bible say about that and it just condenses it and makes it like a really simple easy to read book this was very well done i have two more i have one about work and one about racial equality that i'm going to read so those are all the books i read i did have one book that i dnf'd man if you guys are still here this is like a 20 minute video i have one book i dnf'd it was called shadows by kristen proby and i just couldn't get into the characters uh, I'll, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that one. I don't, I don't like to talk bad about authors. For a long time, I wouldn't DNF or leave bad reviews. But over the years, I have learned that it's okay to give constructive, constructive criticism. Um, I just didn't, couldn't get into the characters. The premise was great. The storyline itself sounded very intriguing, which is why I bought the book. But I didn't end up finishing it because I didn't love it. All right, guys. Long video. I read a lot of books in October. I don't know how many books I'm going to read in November because it's NaNoWriMo. So we shall see. Let me know what you guys have read in October. If you did any kind of October wrap-up video, let me know in the comments section below so I can check it out and see what you read and see what you're recommending. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!